R roughly, when did you start in the PCA? I'd, uh, in the press? Yeah. 19, I'd say 1941, the time of the war. And was that hard that time? Uh, in school? Yeah. No, it wasn't hard in school. It felt quite, quite good. But uh, we had to, um, uh, I had to uh, cycle from my place in Belleville six miles mm -hmm. to school and six miles home. The, and then there was a lot of work to be done on the farm, so they'd look at you funny at home if you had to do your, you know, like homework. Yeah. <laughs> it's what we're doing in school all day. <laughs> it was a different time, but now, of course, it's all study and people are different. But so few went to secondary school that time. Yeah. None of my class now in my school in Rahil, the National, none of them went to secondary school. Very few. So okay. that's it, right? Two sisters were already gone there, so I, I followed suit then. Liked it, but I, no fault of the school. There was no slapping or anything like that. No, it was quite good. And you did your bit of work, and then that's it. It was, yeah. uh, and people were very, the kids were very obedient now in that time. There was, uh, like, it wouldn't be like now, they wouldn't answer back and yeah. they wouldn't hardly ask questions. You know, you'd be very reluctant to, even if you knew the answer, you'd be, you know, you'd be uneasy, in case you'd be wrong, you know, the, that's yeah. the way it was. You'd be very obedient entirely and very sort of nervous. Even if you knew a thing, as I say, you wouldn't, you'd, you'd be hesitant. Say, we had six days at school because we had half day on Saturday as well. Now everything was good and the memory of it is all round was very good. I'd have no special memory or no special regret. It was very, very good. And great to have that knowledge. I went to do nursing then and I did my prelim in six months and it takes uh, two years to yeah. do it. So that was very good. I was called up by the matron. So that, that was a sign. It was good to go there and good to get that education that I could go forward like that and be picked out to do my uh, uh, what you, prelim, mm -hmm. whatever you call it, first, first exam. How many nuns were in the school when you went there? Well, I wouldn't know how many nuns though. I know Sister Malatry, Sister Paul, Sister Dominic, Sister Philomena, Sister, Sister Columba. There'd be others in the national school as well mm -hmm. then, so I wouldn't be okay with the, yeah. the, the teachers there. And it's a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> of course, the actual physical building has changed ever since the new school has gone in there, but uh, at once it was just a small... Yeah. And to, everyone was kind of... those six pupils in Leaven's or Yeah, it was... It, it was uh, there was no building at all, only that... Uh, the national school and that added on to it somewhere or other. So do you have a uniform in school? Um, we, did, we did have a uniform, white, white collar and um, um, blouse with the collar outside. We wore a brown dress as well. So maybe that was the uniform? The yeah, and the white collar. And we used to wash the white collar because that's a... <laughs> that is need wash. Were there any uh, boys in the? School? No boys, no. It was all all girls. But then that's when you, you know, your man comes in. Um, Liam or Luke Lane, is it? Luke Lane, yeah, yeah. That's when it started. Then he'd be way after my time now. He'd be. Oh, what does he? What age is he now? Sixty something. That'd be a good few years, but twenty yeah. years later probably. But you'll you'll be able to get all that from him, all mm -hmm. that information. Yeah. And um, what was your opinion on having a girls only school and having the boys at home? We didn't mind. We didn't mind. The great obedience in that time. You did, you know, you, you didn't complain. Like everything was great, kind of great to be there. And we didn't miss the boys now. Mm. Like we didn't now it's better maybe the mix. Yeah. But we didn't go wild or anything when we left school then either. Just, you know, you. Your standard to live in is very, very um, important that time, you know, to, it was great um, religious uh, uh, people didn't do anything, right? like everything was supposed to be mortal sin and all the rest of it. So you stayed, you stayed uh, good, you know, you stayed 
as good as you could, like. Mm -hmm. And at that time, did you uh, pick your subjects or? With what everyone, kind of the same subjects. We did them all. We did English and Irish and French and no less, no. And then we did um, uh, history and geography and uh, maths, of course. And uh, this included algebra and geometry and all that. That's about it now, all the main subjects now. Yeah. That, we didn't do anything or business studies or anything like that, like you do now, you know yeah. what I mean? Nothing like that. And how many people were in the school when you were in it, roughly? Wait, how many were in, in the school? school? It's in um, 50, 60. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's right, it was. There wouldn't be many more than that. I, I can't even tell how many were in my class. But uh, there wouldn't be that many anyway, you know. You could count them maybe on, on, two, on two hands. Were there any teachers in the school that weren't nuns, or were they all? Any teachers who weren't? Nuns. Oh, it's just uh, Miss O'Malley was a lay teacher, the only one. Oh, yeah. I'd rhyme you anyway, but sure there could be there could be classes ahead of me and that you know our classes coming in. I sure I remember teaching something or other anyway, but I don't know if it was maths now or anything she could be teaching in. Some of them could be teaching lots of subjects. And how did your second level education benefit you for the rest of your life? I, very, very well now, I'd say it is. It did now. It, it, I wouldn't be as good now of a memory you know, that I could remember back that much. But I'd say it stood to me for these as well. I'd, I'd, when these were doing, not Anne, well, Anne was here all the time, but when they'd be doing their, uh, I'd write out the notes for them and all that. We'd just sit there, there'd be a table there and long there, and they'd, uh, we'd sit there and they take out their books and I do notes for them and all that. So that was a great help. Mm. Do you know to be yeah. to be able and to understand. Yeah. And has the education changed? Education system changed very much since you did it. I'd say more subjects, and I'd say it's got harder. Mm. Oh, I would say it's got harder. So uh, otherwise, are more subjects and and harder. And, Tougher in times as well for the children, I, you know, the, the students. I said it's, it's tough well towards the end and the leaving certain hour. And it's, uh, I wish everyone well because it is hard. We didn't have to go through that now. All that, uh, we did preparation up to junior inter, we called yeah. it at that time. And um, then there was no leaving or anything, so we didn't have the stress that all the children have now. And to get their points, then is another thing. You either passed or failed, I think, mm -hmm. in those days, no, no point system. That's all the questions, yeah. Is it? Thank you very Thank much. You. Oh, you're very welcome. You're welcome, everyone. What made you want to become a nun? Well, I always had this desire to do some good. You know, people who are poor, most of the foreign missions, and. When we were young, the messenger used to always come into the Far East used to come in and the Columbus sisters and these lovely habits, white habits and yeah. working out on the missions and now it always that great desire to do some good. Okay. So that was always in my mind as a youngster in primary school. Yeah. Into my secondary school a bit as well. Yeah. It was part of the culture at the time. You know, there would be about 20 of students in Leaving Cert. Out of that 20, I'd say nearly every one of them would have thought of it. Yeah. Maybe like one or two that wouldn't. But maybe five or six from every Leaving Cert class would have entered. When did you first start to become a nun? It's in start your proceedings and start mm -hmm. studying the faith and... Yeah. But when I had my Leaving Cert done, yeah, when I was leaving Cert done, um, there were sisters who came looking for vocations. They came to the school and um, they were looking for vocations. And at that time, I, 
I wanted to, and I didn't want to. Yeah. And um, so I didn't enter straight after leaving cert. I went out and I taught for a while in a few schools. <clears throat> and I am. Um, uh, then some of the sisters from the school, from the, my presentation tune, asked me to come in to talk to her. I went in and she said, well, if you think of it, if ever you, I said, oh, I don't think so. And uh, she said, well, if you think of it now, I was going away to teach in Waterford at the time, and she said, if you do consider it, write to the novice mistress, that was the person who would be in charge of the young nuns on the Feast of the Sacred Heart. So on the Feast of the Sacred Heart, I said, oh God, today, oh, I was to write it. And I began thinking of it, and then I wrote a letter. There you go. And then the ball started rolling, and then I became an own. Then I had three years of learning, and, and I took vows. Okay. It was hard, it was a tough time. Tough, we'd be up at six o'clock in the morning. Uh-huh. Yeah. I prayed for an hour when I would be used to that kind of praying and then yeah but the, it was good too we, we'd be in silence all day except, yeah silence at meals silence all day except from 4 to 5 7 to 8 but we had great fun there were a big crowd of youngsters you know yeah. we were all young and we were we had life we had a good time apart from the getting up yeah. there then that, yeah. <laughs> okay. um, in your time in Athenry, what would be the most major changes you would have noticed, both in like education and culturally? Well, I was here from 70 to 76. Taught here in 70 to 76. I taught music and religion. <clears throat> and that was just after Vatican II. Um, we had the habits on before that, you know, the big yeah, habits on yeah. there. And we changed into, um, about in 69, before I came to Adderall, we changed into short skirts. And, and that we began to, I think I began to realise that I was a woman really. Up until then I was a nun and I was holy yeah. and I was saying my prayers. But for some reason the change of clothes, the change of Vatican and moving out amongst the people. It was a whole new culture, a whole new way of being. Yeah, the whole yeah. way of being. When I was when I was in, in the in the before the break, before we became more liberal, we prayed. And we were holy, we were good. We were still alright yeah. <laughs> after but but it became we became more, <clears throat> more real, I think. Yeah. More real. That we knew that there were people outside in the world suffering and new people. That we weren't, when we were, up until then, we thought religious life was the best life. Then we learned that married life was equally as good. and. Um, Whatever life you're living, you lived it the best way you could. And we weren't the perfect people. Everybody else had their own vocation and their own way of living. And they were as close to God and closer than we were. It was a whole different culture, I think. And could you briefly describe schools when you first started? Like, how did, in comparison, let's just say, to the school we have now, what would be the major changes? I'd say the major changes is are that um, students have a voice. Students can ask what they want. Students' voices are heard. Um, in my time, the teacher was boss. Yeah. And the teacher gave the facts, like we were talking about there recently. The teacher taught the facts. And you went home and you learned them. Now, the students can come in and have, get all the facts from Google. It's a different. It's yeah. A diff it's totally different. And um, school now is, I think it's more experiential.
What made you want to become a nun? Now that's a very difficult question, but I did my leaving cert in Chew, long ago, and I had no intention at all of becoming a sister. Uh, I had other things in my head. But somehow or another, I had this kind of a feeling that this is what I should do with my life. Even though it wasn't what I'd say I naturally wanted. But there was some kind of a, I suppose you call it a call or something there, asking me to look at this. And I thought, yes, I will do this for a little while and I will enter in June and then I will leave again and do what I want to do. But somehow or another, once I entered, I never thought of leave, leaving again for a long time. I had uh, decided with my friend that I'd meet her again after a few weeks, and uh, that, but I forgot all about her and about everything. Yeah. And I stayed where I was, and I'm here since. Now, okay. that doesn't mean to say I didn't have doubts here and there as I went along, I had, but I never had anything sufficiently strong enough that that in any other type of life or calling of life called me to, to, to follow it. I, I'm very contented in the, the life I'm leading myself now. Yeah. Okay. Um, and when, when did you know? I knew, I kind of knew a long time, but I didn't uh, acknowledge it or say it to myself. But eventually, a year after I did my leaving cert, I said I must. I'll give this a call, I'll give it a shout, I'll give it an answer, and I'll see what comes of it. And okay. from then on, okay. I stayed where I was. Uh, in your time in Athenry, what would be the most major, major changes you've noticed? You mean in the education or in the culture or the whole? Say in the, let's say in the education and in the kind of culture of things. Ah, well, when I started teaching here, which was in the late sixties and the early seventies, our education was very, very simple. If you like, we had only just one school. What you have now, as yeah. a, a one area, you have, you have that for for carpentry. We had that was the whole school because we only had a couple of hundred, and. Um, it was a, co a homely kind of a place because you knew everybody, you knew all the parents and you knew the area and the children were very were very respectful and very well-mannered. They came from a rural background, most of them, and even those who didn't. It, they had great values, they had great Christian values and they were people of integrity, I would say. You know, so it was easy to teach them. Yeah. I never had any great trouble or teaching them. Okay. Um, what about Nananega's life do you most admire? Oh, Nananega was an extraordinary woman, look. She was quite extraordinary for her time because she was a very rich woman, a rich girl, and had education, which a lot of the Irish hadn't at the time. And her parents were very rich and their big estates and lots of money and land. And uh, she saw herself as following on that line. But for some mystery, mysterious way, we don't know, she suddenly saw that there were people less well off than herself. People with no education, people were very poor, and she thought that she might be able to do something for them. And she gave up her life of ease, we call it, and she started teaching them in their little hovels around Cork and helping them and she saw that education was a way towards improving their lives. And that's what she did and she had the courage to follow that. Even though this, this was now in the penal days when people had no, um, they weren't free and you couldn't yeah. go to school or you, only the rich people. And she had, there were head schools, all right, people who were taught on the quiet. If she were found teaching in those days, she would have been punished by the English because the Irish weren't supposed to learn anything or they weren't supposed to own anything. And 
They were supposed to t speak their own language or practice their own faith. But she went here to that. And she, she did it and then she got a few more women who also wanted to do it and help her. And when she died, her three companions that were left after, they continued on and bit by bit, they founded the order that we know today's presentation. And that is, it's in the five continents all over the world there's the presentation sisters working, like Nana did, for helping other people and educating people. And, and that, and it's a tremendous legacy she's passed down. Yeah. To, to people today, even in a little place like at the Rhine and all other places like it around the world. It's a tremendous yeah. okay. thing that she has given to the world. So, next question. How would you describe schools when you first started? In comparison, I should say, in to schools to now Well, today. it was very simple in that we had none of these highfalutin uh, uh, visual aids that they have now. We made our own visual aids. You know, we had no whiteboards, we had no uh, IT that you have today, we have none of that. And yet, people learned, people taught, people learned, and they were more involved in their own education, I think, from that point of view, in that they weren't taken up with phones and, and all this IT equipment. It was very simple, it was really... Basic. Very basic. Blackboard and chalk and yeah. pencils and pens. And, and, that, and people enjoyed doing that. And it was very simple. Okay. But there was a good education, I would say. Um, I don't think there was as much learning off as there is now. Even though with all the equipment, I see education today is cramming people with knowledge, even though there's no need to do it because you can ask Google and he'll do it for you in a minute. Yeah. But yet, yet, there's a lot of pressure, I think. I think there's an awful lot of pressure on young people, on students today. And there's a lot of competition, I would say. Now, they have lots of other advantages, but I would see these as uh, disadvantages. So, um, would you tell us a little bit about your experience as a teacher? My experience as a teacher? Well, I had a good experience in the primary school until I was in third class. Then after that I had, uh, I lost it all because we had a very hopeless teacher altogether without nothing. And um, as a teacher then I came back. I was always a teacher, I was always a good teacher. I knew myself, whatever I did in my life, I was going to be teaching, because that was kind of my bent always. I was always teaching my brothers and sisters and teaching the neighbor's kids, and we were always playing school. And when I came here, then I was teaching French and, and, and religion. Now, French was just beginning to change when the students were required to do orals. So that meant I had to spend a good while in France in order to get the fluency. But I liked that and that was grand. And the religion was more difficult because this is, we were after Vatican II, if you ever heard of Vatican II, when things began to change in the church. And suddenly the teaching of religion began to change. And we were looking around, we didn't really know now what we were going to teach her, how we were going to teach her, that. So we were always doing courses in religions to try to help us to teach religion as it should be taught now and after Vatican II. And we weren't a bit sure, or nobody was sure, and I don't think we, we did that very well. But th those were the times and there was nothing else we could do. The old method had gone. And the new method hadn't been approved of, you know, or hadn't been fully sanctioned, or had, it, people didn't know. But anyway, we did what we could. And, and in France, in the French thing, we would bring them to France every year. Now, it was easier then to bring students to France, or to any other continent. If I were teaching now, I wouldn't do it, I would do it too frightened. 
Mm. You know, but I do think it's a great way to learn. But then, as against that, the, all the students now, their parents can bring them. Whereas in those days, the parents couldn't. Yeah. You know? So they'll go off. They all have been in planes in different countries since they were knee high. I would say, just looking in at it. Um, have you ever had doubts about your faith? Oh, I had. Well, I had doubts that time now, after Vatican II. Whereas I improved Vatican II, I thought it was great, and I thought we really needed change, and we really needed to update, particularly the teaching of religion. And religion was changing, you see. And um, I've never had, had doubts that I was going to give up my Catholic faith, my Catholic religion. Now, I did go to India in the pursuit of a different kind of prayer and different kind of religion. And I went to the ashrams and various places like that, just exploring yeah. my faith and seeing other people's faith. And, and that I found that great help. And I was never, where I admired these religions, other people, especially Eastern religion, and I learned a lot from them. But that, in no way did it ever occur to me that I take up their faith or their yeah. religion. I, I used that as a backup and as a help to me to deepen my own religion. If you could describe Nan and Nagel in three words, what would you say? Well, she was a woman of courage. There's no doubt about it. She was a woman of, she was born with great faith. And she was a very hard-working, conscientious uh, uh, woman. She did what she had to do, despite all the difficulties and, you know, the ups, ups and downs, especially yeah. the downs of the period when she lived, the culture in which she lived, and the history, you know, in which she yeah. lived. It was very, very difficult in those days. And for her, it was very more, it was more difficult in that, she had seen, she had lived a good life. And now here she is, and she has nothing of her life. So she's well, going to be attacked. Well, that's it, so is thanks a million anyway. Um, and I'd like to thank you on behalf of the committee as well. Oh, thank you. Thanks a million, it's been a great yeah. help. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> thanks a million. Thanks for saying. Time. Such a time when hearts were hurting, longing to find some peace of mind, find an open door. I knew a time. Such a time when hearts kept searching, trying to see the darkness to free the heart without its soul. Where love feels the pain, love lies the pain.